It has been one month since I quit my job as a software developer to pursue my dreams of working for myself. And in that month, I've learned a few interesting things that I wanted to document here in case anyone's following the same journey. And by the way, I'm coming at this from the perspective of a complete novice. I have worked in the software industry for over 15 years, but I've worked for myself for only one month. So here's five things I learned in the first month working for myself. And something that has helped me stay relatively sane is thinking about this as a long-term strategy. So currently I'm working on a new digital product. I'm creating a course for something I've created a lot of free content about on this website and on my YouTube channel. And that's something that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort, but it doesn't have any immediate benefits. Until I complete that course and make it live, I've got no chance of anyone getting any value from it. And therefore, in return, I've got no chance of making any money from it. Reminding myself that if I want to create more passive income by creating digital products like this Gradle course helps me to stay sane day to day. And it actually would be quite easy to be quite short term about this and think, right, what's the quickest way I could start earning some money today? I'd probably end up going onto a site like Upwork and finding some quite low paid opportunities, but actually earning some money. But this isn't my long-term strategy. I want to create products that people get value from and not end up in another arrangement, which is just another job in disguise. I've also realized that keeping myself motivated is quite hard. And as someone that's always been quite a hard worker, like at school and throughout my career, I've never really had a problem concentrating and getting down to work. This was quite surprising. And I realized that it's kind of because I'm now my own boss that I'm maybe not holding myself as accountable as I was before. The other thing is that there's quite a lot of distractions. I live in the city of Brighton, which is on the seafront. And on a day like today, when the sun's out, everybody's on the beach. It's very tempting to go down there and have a dip in the water, but I need to keep my head focused. And a couple of ways I've done this is, firstly, I've realized that if I'm actually delivering content that's getting feedback, then this really helps me keep motivated. And in the first month, I've created two articles and two videos, and they haven't been runaway successes or anything, but it's great to put something out there that hopefully somebody at some point is gonna get some value from. And this is probably quite a cliched motivation thing, but looking after my health and diet definitely helps. And to do that, I've been doing a lot of running and swimming and cycling, and where possible, staying away from those Mr. Kipling cakes. And after a couple of weeks of working for myself, I kind of realized that I didn't really have enough time to do all the things that I wanted to do in my working week. And this was really surprising because I'd left my job specifically so that I would have more time. And I thought that I would at least be able to, one, work on my course, two, create one article, and three, create one video per week. But this actually didn't work out, mainly because my articles and videos take a lot of research and the videos take a long time to edit. So I ended up having to really prioritize. I'm focusing on the course, the digital product, and I'm going to spend less time on the videos and articles. And this is one reason that I'm making this video rather than a tutorial video like I normally make, just so that I can spend less time on the complex editing and actually deliver a video on a regular basis. And in terms of scheduling my time, I've already tried in the first month three different timetables. The first two were very prescriptive, telling me what I needed to do in each one hour increment. And the timetable I'm using right now is what I've coined the DWTF IW, the do WTF I want timetable. And it basically involves me working in the morning for three hours and then in the afternoon deciding what I want to do, whether that be working or exercising or anything else. And I'm hoping that just taking this pressure of having to work all day long is going to help me keep more motivated. I'll let you know in a week or two how that's going. And of course, the other advantage if you're working for yourself is that you don't have to necessarily conform to the standard working week. So my first two timetables were pretty much a nine to five type job. But now I've realized that actually maybe working a bit in the morning and potentially working later in the afternoon or the evening could work well for me. But like all of this, this is a work in progress and hopefully I can tweak it and improve it as things go. The next thing I realized, which I suppose is kind of obvious, is that attracting money does take time. And this kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about this being a long-term strategy and not about making a quick buck. But I am looking to do some consulting work on the side to keep my skin in the game, as you say. And if you know anything about software development or DevOps, you'll know that things change really quickly, which is why I want to do consulting on the side 
as well as creating my course. And I've already had a few inbound leads from my website. And I've realized one thing is that not every email that comes in is going to be my next gig. But I was super happy that I already made $100 for a very small amount of work based on someone contacting me from my website. And I know that doesn't sound a lot, but when you put out a lot of free content, it's nice when someone emails you and they trust you enough that they want to work with you. And the final thing I've realized here is that working for myself is actually better than I was expecting. Like I had no idea what it was gonna be like. I knew I was relatively well motivated and I knew that I didn't mind too much working for myself. And I guess in some regards that I'm a bit like the stereotypical introvert software developer that doesn't mind just sitting down and getting working on their own. That said, one thing that I miss a little bit from the job that I worked on before was the team that I had, the camaraderie, and dare I say it, banter that was going about. And as fun as that was, it's actually something I don't miss as much as I thought I would. Sorry guys if you're watching, but instead I can just spend more time outside, going out for lunch, walks, and split up my day a bit more so I'm not just spending all day sat in front of the computer. And I've also joined some meetup groups, I've been on a lovely cycle ride, and hopefully as we're coming out of this lockdown thing, I can do more of that to keep a healthy balance in my working day. And if you're thinking of working for yourself, then let me know what you think you would find the most difficult. And if you already are working for yourself, how did you find your first month? Thanks a lot for watching, and I'd really like to keep documenting my journey if you'd be interested to listen. So, look forward to seeing you in the next video.